In this video, we'll be going over Avogadro's law, which states that the volume of the gas and the moles of gas are directly proportional. That means that if, you inc if, if there's more moles of gas, then it'll take up more volume. And if the moles of gas were to decrease, then the volume would decrease as well. So the moles and volumes, they move in the same direction. And that's that should be easy to understand because if the you just think the more gas there is, the more space it'll take up. The less gas there is, the less space the gas will take up. So then there's a direct relationship. And so the graph will look like this, where when the number of moles of gas increase, the volume increase, and with the number of moles decrease, then the volume will also decrease. This is the equation that you would use for a Avogadro's law problem, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. This is how a problem will look like. Five liters of a gas is known to to contain 0.965 moles. If the volume of gas is increased to 1.8 moles, what is the new volume? So here we have a change in moles, and we want to figure out what the final volume would be. So let's label the variables. This is our initial volume, V1. This is our initial moles, N1. And this is the, initial, the, the final moles, N2. And then we want to find the final volume, V2. So then we can just substitute into the equation. V, V1 is 5 liters. N1 is 0.965 moles. V2, that's what we're trying to solve for. And then the, the final moles, N2, is 1.8. Then we can just multiply the 1.8 moles over to the other side. So it'll give, it'll give you... 5 liters times 1.8 moles divided by 0.965 moles. Oh, 1.8 moles. There we go. And then the moles will cancel out, and that will give us 9.32 liters. So here the moles increased, and the volume also increased. So that's consistent with what we said in Avogadro's law. Here's another problem. A flexible container at an original volume of 5.12 liters, so that's our V1, contains this amount of moles, that's our, going to be our, our N1. More gas is added to the volume, to the container until the final volume is, is 18, and that's going, to be, that's going to be V2. And it says, assuming that pressure and the temperature stays the same, calculate the number of moles that were added to the container. So we're not trying to figure out what the final number final moles we're trying to figure out how many moles had to be added to change the volume. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the final moles and then subtract it by the original number of moles to figure out the difference in moles. Let's set up the equation V1, 5.12 liters, N1, original number of moles, 8.5 moles, equals to V2, 18.1 liters, and then we don't know what N, N2 is. Since uh, n is on the, the variables on the bottom, what we're going to start is cross multiply. Whenever your variables on the on the bottom of the fraction, start by cross multiplying. So then the 5.12 will go with the n2, and then the 18 will go with the 8.5. Then to isolate the n2, we're going to divide both sides by 5.12 liters. And then that will get rid of 5.12 liters. The liters will also ca cancel on this side. So that means N2 will be equal to these two numbers on top multiplied together, divided by the 5.12 on the bottom. And that gives us 30.0 moles. That's the final, final amount of moles. To figure out the amount of moles that we need to add, well, we take the the change in the number of moles is going to equal to the final number of moles minus the initial number of moles. So the final is 30, and the initial, the one that we started with, N1, would be 8.5. And then that comes out to be 21.5 moles of gas that we need to add. And that's the final answer. So just to recap, Avogadro's law states that the volume and moles of gas are directly proportional. If you have more moles, then you have more volume. If you have fewer moles, there's going to be fewer volume. This is how the graph looks like, and this is the equation you use when the problems deal with changes in volume and changes in number of moles.
if you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.